Hello everybody, welcome to the section on time series data and relationships. In this video, we will look at importing time series in Python. And I'm going to show you five examples of data sets that we're going to import. The first one is Google Trends. It's basically a term search count of the word vacation. So this is essentially count data. And the second example that we have is retail furniture and furnishing sales data in millions of dollars. The third example will be the adjusted closed stock price for Bank of America. The fourth example is the adjusted closed stock price for JP Morgan Bank. And then the fifth example is the monthly average temperature in Fahrenheit for St. Louis. So let's head over to the Jupyter Notebook and get started with importing data sets. Here in the Jupyter Notebook, we will import and inspect these five data sets. And just be aware that there are common routine things that you will be doing, and it will become familiar the more that you do it. So let's start with our imports of pandas, numpy, and matplotlib. And our first example is the vacation data set. We're going to read that in. Let's check for any missing values. We do not have any. I do want to fix that column name to something that's more familiar to me, the number of search of the word vacation. This is a term count. Let's convert this to date time. So we're going to take the month column, convert it to date time, and we're going to make this column our index column as well. Let's check out the descriptive statistics. So this gives us the central tendency, dispersion, shape of a data set's distribution, excluding the NAN values. We also have the percentile values, the quantiles 1, 2, and 3 on numeric values. We can also, if you were to calculate the median, notice that that 56 is also at the 50th percentile here. And whenever you have a mean that's greater than the median, it implies the data is right skewed. And if the mean is less than the median, you, it implies that the data is left skewed. So let's plot this time series. It should look familiar. You've seen it before. It kind of trends downward, then stabilizes around 2013. There's periodic patterns or cycles. There's a notable spike in June 2015 with 75 counts of the search term vacation. Let's go ahead and plot the histogram, which gives the frequency of counts. And be aware that you can change the number of bins. And if you have some kind of intuition about what it should be, you can definitely tweak it. Another way is to take a look at the kernel density plot. So this shows the distribution of the data over a continuous interval, and it smooths out the noise in the time series. So basically, the peak tells us where the values are concentrated. In some ways, it's a better way to display the distribution. It's not affected by the number of bins used. So let's save this data frame. The next example is the furniture data set, and it goes from 92 to 2019. We're going to read this in, and right off the bat, I see a messy column heading here. We can rename the columns. And I want to check for any missing values. There are none. I want to convert to date time and set the index to be the month column. So here we have our data frame. And let's take a look at the descriptive sum summary statistics. So we have a mean of 7553.8 in millions of dollars. And we have a mean, a median of 7651. Let's plot this. And I've added some brown vertical lines. There are four of them to kind of denote the period where these trends kind of break the pattern. And these are recessionary periods. So we can plot the histogram for this. Again, you can change the number of bins as you see fit. You can tweak it. Let's take a look at the kernel density plot. Now for this data set, we want to adjust the price, and I'm going to first read in the CPI data, the Consumer Price Index data. And I notice that the last value that we have is July 1st, 2019. So that's the most current point that we have. 
and I want to convert this to a Python list. And I'm going to create a new column in the data frame called CPI. So for that July 2019 value, we want to calculate the CPI for all months from 92 to 2019, dividing by that July 2019 CPI value. So we're going to get this July 19 rate column here. And next, we're going to multiply our data according to that rate. And this will adjust the prices to July 2019. So here I've created a new data frame that captures this new price adjusted furniture price in millions of dollars. And I'm going to save this data frame. The third example is the Bank of America adjusted close stock price data. And I've already pulled the data. I'm just going to read it in. I'm going to check for missing values. There are none. Let's take a look at the column names. So when you use dot columns, it should give you a list of the column names. And we want to convert to date time, set the index. And now let's take a look at the data frame. We also would like to see the descriptive statistics. And I'm just noticing a mean of 16.31 and a standard deviation of 10.91. I'm going to plot this. And let's take a look at the histogram. I've set the bins to 50. And we can also take a look at the kernel density plot. Let's save this data frame. The fourth example is similar to the third example. This is JP Morgan Bank's adjusted close stock price. And I'm going to read in the data since I've already pulled it before and saved it. I'm going to check for missing values. There are none. Convert to date time. I'm going to set the index to that date column. And so here we have the data frame. When we look at the descriptive statistics, it's interesting to see that the minimum value is 1.319 and the maximum value is 119.95. So let's plot the time series and take a look at the histogram, the frequency of counts. And let's take a look at the kernel density plot. And let's save this data frame. OK, we're done with that. And now we have our last example, the average temperature, St. Louis and Fahrenheit. And so this one has two columns, the value column, which is the average temperature. And this is monthly data. The anomaly is the difference of this temperature from a base period average. So the anomaly is the departure from mean from 1938 to 2000 base period. And if there are any missing values, it is coded as a float number of negative 99.0. However, when we use that command isNA and take the sum, it shows 0 as if there are no missing values. But I know from reading the description that there is a missing value in this data frame, in this data frame, and it is coded as negative 99.0. So let's query to find that missing value assigned to negative 99.0. And we learn that it sits at index position 899. The one before it at 898, that temperature value is 35.5. And the value at the index position after the missing value is 55.3. So if we were to take the average of these two, the points before and the point after, we would get 45.4. But first, let's reset that negative 99.0 to NAN. And we'll use the NumPy way of NP.NAN to put that value at index position 899. Now when we check for NAN's the pandas way, we find that yes, it has picked up that missing value and tells us there's one. But instead of directly putting that 45.4 into index position 899, there's a way to interpolate. There's a method called interpolation in which it will take a missing value and take the value before and after, calculate the average, and replace it for the missing value. So that's what we're going to do. 
And when we check the new value at index position 899, that NAN value has been replaced by 45.4. So we can move forward now. We're going to convert to date time. We're going to set the index to that date column. And we're going to take a look at the data frame, look at the descriptive statistics here. And let's just subset out the column of interest and plot the time series. We'll plot the frequency of counts. I've set the bins to 55. We will calculate the kernel density plot, and we will save the data frame. So these are the five examples that I have for you.